Hello all, welcome to our channel. VMware has recently released vSphere 8 which has a lot of new and useful features. In this video, we will install and configure ESX 8.0 on Dell PowerEdge Server R730 and get familiar with new ESX host client. Let's jump into the video. Open your favorite browser and type Dell Hardware Management IP, also called as IDRAG IP. Click the Advanced button and then click Proceed to accept the self-signed certificate. Enter the Dell IDRAC username and password and then click submit button. As you can see in the video, we are using Dell PowerEdge R730 server. By default, it is configured to use HTML5 plugin. If another user is trying to access the same console, it will be denied. For now, I will change to full access and then click apply button. To access the IDRAC remote console, we need license. In this server, we have enterprise license, so we can able to access the console. Now we are good with the remote console configuration. Let's download the ESX 8.0 ASO file. Open a browser and go to vmware.com website. Click the resources tab in the top right corner and then scroll down. Click the product downloads. Next to VMware vSphere, click the download product link. By default it is showing 8.0 version. If you want to download older version, you can select from the drop down menu. Click the go to downloads link next to ESX 8.0. Click read more link to see the release date and build number. This version is released just 4 days before. Click the download now button. It will redirect to the login screen. Login with your VMware credential. Enable the checkbox to accept the VMware general terms and then click accept button. Now the download will start. This ISO is a standard ISO without any custom drivers. We can also get custom ISO files with additional drivers and utilities specific to the hardware. In this video we are using Dell server so we can download and use Dell ISO file instead of standard ISO file. Click the custom ISO tab then expand the OEM customized installed CDs. Under this we can able to find two customized CD. One is for HPE and another one is for Dell EMC. In this video we are using Dell server so we, we can click go to downloads next to Dell EMC custom image. In this page we will get two options one is ISO file and another one is zip file. We can use zip file for upgrading the existing installation. ISO file can be used for upgrading the existing system as well as for new installation. In this video we are going to firstly install ESXA server so we will download the ISO file. Click the download now button next to ISO file. Now the download is started. Click the show all button to see the download progress. Depending on your network speed it will take some time. When the download is completed go back to the server ID page. Click the launch button in the virtual console preview. Server virtual console will be opened in a new window. If pop-up blocker is enabled in the browser, you will get this warning. Click OK and then click the pop-up blocker warning icon on the right side of the window. Then select always allow pop-ups and redirect from this website and then click done. Close the window and open it one more time. This time you won't get the pop-up warning message. Now we can see the server console screen. We will reboot the server and enter into BIOS mode manager using F11 key. For this go to power link and then select the desired power option and click apply. Click the yes button to confirm the action. Now the server will reboot. We will connect the ESXi ISO file to the virtual console using connect virtual media. Click the connect virtual media button. You will get a pop-up window. In this pop-up window click the choose file button to show the ESXi ISO file. Select the ESXi ISO file and click open. Click the map device button to map the ISO file to the virtual console. Then close the pop-up window. After system reboot, I wrongly entered into system setup screen. So let's exit from the screen and enter into BIOS boot manager. Press the F11 key to enter into BIOS boot manager. Now we are in BIOS mode manager screen. Click the one shot BIOS boot menu. Then click the virtual optical drive. 
Now the server will boot from ESXi ISO virtual CD which we mapped using virtual media option. Select the ESXi installer option using arrow keys and press enter. We will follow the on-screen steps to complete the ESXi installation. Press enter to continue. Press the F11 key to accept the end user license agreement. As you can see, we are facing problem in passing the F11 key stroke into the virtual console. Let's switch to Java based console and see whether we are able to pass the F11 key stroke. Change to Java in the plugin type and click apply. Now click the launch virtual console link. It will download Java connection file. To open this file, we need Java. I have already installed Java on this system. So let's click the downloaded file and connect to the virtual console. It is giving warning to update the Java version. We can do that later. It is showing SSL related warning message. Click continue. It is again giving warning later to the publisher. Enable the do not show checkbox and click run button. Again one more warning message later to the certificate. Click run button. Finally we entered into the console screen using Java plugin. Let's try to pass F11 keystroke using our keyboard. Luckily it worked. We are seeing only one disk from the local server which has a capacity of 4.36 TB. The backend of the single virtual disk has 5 disks configured using RAID 6 with one dedicated hotspot. Press enter key to continue. Select the keyboard layout and press enter key. Configure the root password and press enter key. ESXi 8 version is showing warning message related to the CPU installed on this server. It is just a warning message saying that this CPU might not be supported in the future release of ESXi. So we can continue with the installation. Press the enter key. Press the F11 key to start the installation. Now the ESXi 8.0 version is installed on the server. Press the enter key to reboot the server. ESXi 8 ISO is automatically unmounted from the console. Server is rebooted now. In this screen we can see the version of ESXi installed on this server, server model, number of CPU and CPU model, total amount of memory installed and then both IP version 4 and IP version 6 to access the server. Press the F2 key to customize the configuration. Enter the root password which we configured during the installation and press enter key. Using arrow keys go to configure management network option and press enter key. Press enter key in the network adapters option to see the list of available network cards. There are 4 network cards available in the server. Out of these 4, only 2 are connected. It is shown in the status column. Right now only first network card is used. Using arrow keys go to the second network card and press the spacebar to activate the second network card also. Press enter key to apply the changes. Go to the IP version 4 configuration option and press enter key. We will configure static IP for the server. So go to the third option and press the spacebar. We will check for free IP using the ping command. If you have any network discovery tool, you can get the free IP from that tool also. From the ping command, we can confirm that dot for IP is not used, so we can use this IP for our ESXi server installation. Configure dot for IP and press enter key. If you don't want IP version 6, you can disable it. Select the disable option and press the enter key. Go to DNS configuration and press enter key. To manually enter the DNS setting, go to the second option and press the spacebar. Enter the DNS server and hostname details and press enter key. Once we are done with the network configuration, we can press escape key to save the setting. Since we have disabled IP version 6, a reboot is required. Press Y E to reboot the server. After reboot, we can notice in the screen IP version 6 is no longer available. Again, press F2 key to do the further customization. Enter the root password and press the enter key. Go to the test management network option and press the enter key. Using this option, we can test all the network settings are correct or not. Press the enter key to start the testing. 
we are getting failed message for the host name this is normal because we have configured public dns and this host name is not added to any domain register press enter key using the network restore option we can restore the network settings if there are any issues with the network settings Using this troubleshooting mode option, we can enable ESX itself to do the basic troubleshooting. Also, we can enable SSH to connect to the server from remote machine using PuTTY tool to do the further troubleshooting. We can also see system related logs and support information also in this screen. Press the escape key to log out from this console. Let's connect to the server using web browser. Open a new tab and enter the ESXi IP. Click the advanced button followed by proceed hyperlink to accept the self-signed certificate. Login to the ESXi server using the root credential and press the login button. After successful login, we are presented with a pop-up message asking us to join the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. You can either leave as it is or you can uncheck and click OK button. In the server homepage screen, we can see the overview of the hardware and software. Using the actions menu button, we can perform couple of tasks such as server shutdown, server reboot, enabling the service, entering the maintenance board, etc. Click the manage link on the left side to do the further configuration. Click the time and date link to configure the NTP settings. Click the edit NTP settings button. Then click the use network time protocol option. Change the NTP service startup policy to start and stop with host. Enter the NTP servers in the textbook, either local or public. If you have multiple servers, separate each of them by comma and then click save button. It looks like there is some bug in the actions button because we are not able to start the NTP service using this action button. We can use the alternate method. We can start the NTP service from the services tab. In the hardware tab, we can see the summary of all hardware installed on this server. Also, we can change the power policy of the server. After ESX installation, the server runs in evolution mode for a period of 60 days with all features enabled. Packages tab will show the list of all packages installed on the server. In the services tab, we can see the status of all services which are running and stopped. We will start the NTP service from this tab. Click the NTP service and click the start button. Go back to the time and date menu and click the refresh button. Now the NTP service is started and it is showing the correct time. We can also join this ESX server to a domain and authenticate using domain user. If we want, we can change the ESX root password using this option. If we enter weak password or not having enough different characters like uppercase, lowercase, special character and numeric, then it won't accept. Whatever changes we are doing, it will be shown in the recent tasks. Click the monitor link on the left side. We can use monitor tab to do the troubleshooting related to performance and other configuration related issues. If you want to change the network related settings, click the networking link in the left and then click the VM kernel next tab and then edit the management network related settings.
In the physical links tab, we can see the number of network card and the status of each adapter. If you remember, during the installation, we have enabled the second NIC. We can see the status of second NIC here. By default, it will be in standby mode. If we want load balancing, we have to mark as active. We will also verify whether the port group is also using the same configuration. If you have learned something from this video, please click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and support our channel.